Yeah, so I, I, I've been asked to, to talk about our use of um, grade mark, which is a, a, a marking scheme which is, a, which is aligned to the Turnitin system. Um, now, I, I particularly here is a very basic introduction, so a couple of apologies for all. This really is basic, okay? I'm, I'm a simple chap, <laughs> and uh, what I'm going to talk about here is using the grade mark system in its most simplest form. So you can, there will be people who are, I'm sure, who are sitting in the audience who go well beyond the way in which we're using it here. But, uh, but I even think the basics are, are just, just a handy uh, tool to have at our disposal. And the motivation for using this, because I've been using this for about um, five or six years now, is that I, I personally like annotating student scripts when they come okay? Invariably I would just get a paper format and I would just uh, write my comments on, on top of it. Because to me, intuitively, that, 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 that felt uh, worthwhile. Um, what used to get me really frustrated though is that I would spend hours doing this for now tens or, or hundreds of students in, in sometimes, and then I'd be left at the end of the semester with a big pile of paper um, that the students never picked up. Okay, so I put all this work into it and it, it was awfully difficult to get it back to the students. Um, and this, uh, this grade mark system I think is a, a really good way of getting around that problem. Hopefully this will work. Yeah. So what, what I have here, the, the grade mark system, as I say, is aligned to turn 10. So on my uh, Blackboard uh, page for a particular module, and again, the, the detail here is not important, okay? I've just got a lot of, a, a number of screenshots here, but I'll, I'll take you through the, the important parts of it. Um, so what, I've got a, a module uh, on Blackboard here, and importantly, down here on the left-hand side, there's a little button or tab for course tools. So if you click on that, then it opens up, it expands out to all these options. But the one that I'm interested in is this Turnitin UK, because I as a module tutor have set up uh, a Turnitin um, submission for the students. So students will all submit their work directly to Turnitin. Okay? Now when I do that, or after the students have submitted it, so after the deadline, um, I can go in and look to see which students have submitted and so on. So here I've set up a, a uh, a coursework, a master's thesis, just there, and I click on it, and it opens up like this. So what we have here is just a, a, a visual representation of all the students on a particular module who have submitted, okay? And there's, there's lots of information here, but today I'm just going to talk about these columns here. So, yes, it's Turnitin. I'm sure most of you, or all of you know that Turnitin will look for uh, evidence of plagiarism, similarity between uh, different, um, uh, or just similarity between uh, what the students submitted and what exists elsewhere. Uh, but here, um, on this third column, uh, what this tells me here is that this student's work has yet to be marked, it's yet to be graded, it's yet to receive feedback. So all I would do is I would click on the little pencil for the student that I was going to be working on, and their work, the piece of work that they've submitted, appears in my screen. Okay? Now, down here, working on computer screens, it's important you get things now to the, the size of the display that, that fits you. So down here, I can make this larger or smaller. So there, I get it larger, so it's easy for me to interact with. Now, on this right-hand side of your screen here, there's a, a number of buttons. And this is when I think grade mark com absolutely comes into its own. Because everyone who's done <coughs> student's work knows that at times, you're making the same comment on just about every student's uh, work that's been, uh, piece of work that's been submitted. So what you can do here is pre-populate those things that you typically say to students. You can create a little button so that you don't have to keep saying the same things. You can say it by simply clicking on the button. So one in psychology, there's, there's, there's one here, <coughs> whoops, yeah, there's one here called APA. So we're constantly informing students that they're either following our rules of um, the, the, uh, the APA, the, it's a rules for formatting uh, the students' work uh, and so on. So we're often telling the students, yeah, you've got it right or you've got it wrong. So here, you won't be able to read this, but I'll, I'll read it out to you. When I click this uh, button here, it says, this is not in APA format. Please ensure you make reference to the APA manual available in the library or view resources on the APA website by clicking, pasting, or linking into a browser. Now underneath, there is a link, so the students can actually go in and click on that link and be taken to a document that we've written for them about how to uh, do APA format properly. So, 
The way it would work is that I would click on this APA button because I wanted to provide some sort of feedback on the student's use of formatting and so on. And I would click it over and I would drop it on whereabouts on the student's work that I think is a problem. Okay? Now, when the student comes, when the student eventually gets to see this, then what will happen is not only will they be able to see the little um, tab, but when they hover over it, then the information that's in that button will be expanded and then the student can read it and follow it to any links that we've made elsewhere. However, I mean, it's important to point out that sometimes when you're reading a piece of work, well, often, always, is that you want to make comments that are not generic comments. It's comments that are really specific to that student. They're unique to that student. And grade mark allows you to do that in two ways as well. So up here in this top right-hand corner, there is a, a little button that was to do with comments and a little button that was to do with text. So actually, I might want to write something directly onto the student's piece of work. And so here, I've selected the text button. And then, all I've done is I've gone along, clicked where I want to write, and I just write my comment to the student. So, now, I like this paragraph. It read well. It provided me with a good understanding of what to expect in the coming pages, and so on. Now, the student might submit something uh, that's got lots of text or you know, many pictures on here. And it might actually, if I were to start typing on top of it, it might look a bit, a bit messy. So uh, uh, another way that Grademark can allow me to individually annotate for individual students without making it too messy visually is I can click on this little box up here, which is a comment box. And what I would then do is I would click on that comment box, again, drag it over to here, and it opens up and it allows me to type in that exact same message. I like this paragraph, it read well and provided me with a good understanding of what to expect in the coming, in the coming pages. Okay? So just, oops, so just three different ways of me annotating a student's script. And then the beauty of this is at the end, now I can, I can put a grade on it, and uh, then after a pre-set time, after a deadline, maybe uh, after all, two weeks, as we know we're all marking to two weeks, so two weeks after the students have submitted, I can make this available to students and all students can sit at their desks and just go in, access the grade and access the, the feedback. And so that, that problem of me being left with lots and lots of students now printed work that I've you know, spent a long time putting all my annotated comments on and they never received it. Hopefully that's a, a thing of the past. So, uh, does it work? I mean, there are pros and cons. So to me, the main uh, pros are it's consistency. I think students really do like the fact that they, they like to be familiar with things. So when, we, uh, when they submit a piece of work, if we, and psychology uh, division has been using this quite readily, so students know that this is the type of feedback they're going to get. They know what it's going to be looking like. Um, it protects against the waste of time, as I've explained before, um, because the work that I do, students are much, much more likely now to access that work. Um, and that's because, well, one of the things is it's quicker and easier dissemination. Okay, in the past, I've had to take the scripts down to the students, or if I've used track changes and I've got individual emails I've got to send to each student, this way I don't need to do all that. Now, it's just one, I set it up and it automatically comes available to the students. So it is efficient. Um, another pro is it can be done anywhere as long as you have access to the internet. And I'm going to have a caveat on that later on. Um, so I, I, I can mark this at home. Now, I can log in and, and mark at home. I don't need to take the scripts home with me. And importantly, it can be mined. So if the institution were interested in trying to look at the, uh, evaluate the use of these types of technologies, then the institution can mine our use of it. But also, if I'm interested in what proportion of students actually read my comments, okay, and I can click of a button, I can find out. Uh, and so on. Um, so that, that, that's helpful. The cons, I mean, setup costs. It, it does take setting up those pre populated buttons with the, those comments that you're constantly giving to the students. It does require a little bit of time and thought and effort at the beginning. But once you've, once you've um, sort of like spent that uh, setup cost time, then things are much, much more efficient thereafter. Um, I suppose that this your screen resolutions. I mean, I, I believe that across the institution, almost everyone now has, you might start shouting, I don't know one, but almost everybody has a, a more modern uh, computer terminal uh, uh, screen. So uh, if, if you don't, then I would say to your division leaders to 
to try and get you a more modern one because it is easier to, to read data and things on it. I suppose one of the big uh, cons, though, is, is that it will mean if we were to adopt this, more people will be sitting in front of a, a computer screen. But I'm sure, as you've, you've all uh, done through health and safety training and so on, just take regular breaks. Um, it's, it's, it's not too bad in front of this. Um, and then this, this one here of uh, the corner, that you need to be in front of a screen in order to do it. But one of the things that I, uh, I, I used to do personally was take students' work, uh, printed work, away with me and mark on the train if I was on a long train journey and so on. Um, and I thought, well, I won't be able to do that anymore. But actually, um, you can, because there is an app. I've not used it. I know, George, you've been using it uh, in, in psychology. There is an app, so those of you who have the like, iPads and so on, there's a, a really uh, well-functioning app that allows you to do all this. On your screen, you just download the information. You can work offline. And then when you go back online, everything gets updated and so on. So for us, it's worked well. Um, and I would ask you to, to try and use it if you like annotating students' scripts. It does work well. Thank you.